baby, baby, welcome all to the big show. Um, it's nice to have you here this morning. Welcome all to the party. Uh, it's your buddy. This is your buddy, Uncle Bruce. This is what you get. I'm sorry. I'm even I'm even unshaven for the third day in a row. I'm loving this. Gosh, uh, when you when you're self-employed, you can do what you want. Welcome everyone to the program today. Um, it's Thursday, March twenty first, twenty twenty four, and um, you've come upon a channel known as Stock Markets with Bruce, and I'm I'm that guy. I'm Bruce. Uh, I'm the one the, with the face for radio. Um, <clears throat> I try to talk about the stock market in plain English. Um, that's kind of what I try and do, let you know in plain English what seems to be going on and explain it to you without the fancy gobbledygook terminology that others love to use out there. Um, and we talk about writing options. We talk about bringing income into your hands on a consistent basis by writing stock options. Now, whether you're writing options on stock or, or indexes or other assets, we, we try to find a way to help you bring income into your home from a new source that you may not have ever considered before and you may never have thought to consider that <clears throat> those shares you've been sitting on in company xyz or that company you used to work for and in your 401k you have four thousand shares of blah 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 sitting there and uh it's been there for eight years, so you moved on a long time ago, and um, you just got, yeah, yeah, I got those shares. Um, and they're worth like 50 grand, and whatever. They could be making you money. Uh, they could be bringing you cash every month. Uh, you can charge rent, you know. Uh, come on, uh, wake up and smell the, uh, smell the coffee. Uh, welcome all to the show. There are literally millions of people out there who do not know and are not aware of the fact that they actually have right now and have had for maybe 10 years already enough assets that they are managing and holding and paying for that they could have been living off of already and they could have quit their jobs a decade ago and have been traveling around the world. They could have been retiring. They could have been, let's put it this way. There are people out there who live in Northern US states and in Canada who could have been coming down here where I am in California or Florida, if you like, or Texas, wherever it is you want to be for the winter, grab your RV and head south. You could have been doing this for a decade already. And you're not sitting back like a fat cat with servants and smoking big fat cigars and, you know, um, on some kind of an estate somewhere. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the idea that you could have quit your job a decade ago and have been self-managing your own assets to this very day, bringing in capital that you would never have brought in at the office or at the plant or uh, wherever it is you worked and whatever it is you did. If you had your own business. I mean, there are people here. I know there are people maybe watching, but certainly that some you know personally. There are people you know that own their own business. They own a retail store. They own a restaurant. They, um, they're they side hustling this and that. And, they're doing whatever. and they've tied up all kinds of capital in their little business. And, and they don't realize, you know, like, after a while, you kind of don't pay attention to what you really have when you're too busy working what you've got. And there are people out there with, with assets uh, like, you know, I own three houses and I have an apartment building with three units or six units and I'm a landlord and I'm a handyman. And hey, hey. what you don't realize is you're sitting on, you know, half a million, a million in equity, two million in equity. This long ago could have taken you, you could have long ago quit doing that and just let worked off your made your equity work for you. Uh, I'm, I'm having trouble talking today. Um, so many out there do not do not know. And there are oh, too many horror stories and too many sad stories about people who get ill, who get physically ill. They, 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 get, a, they get cancer. They, they, they're, they're, I don't know. They you know, physically are worn out and beaten up. They, I don't know. Uh, whatever it is, um, husbands and wives split, families break apart, uh, that, 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 and there are people who are, so many people out there who've had a change in their lives for the worse, not the better, 
for some, maybe it is the better that they've split from a partner and they've gone their own way. Great. And yet they don't know what to do. They, they have, they have money in their, in their retirement plan. They have assets in their investment plan, but they don't know what to do with the money. And so they leave it to some professional money managers who manage money on their behalf and they don't pay attention to the statements to tell you what kind of return you're getting on your money because these statements that get released by these money managers are documents of incredible imagination. These documents are printed in such a way and produced in such a way by professional layout artists to give you the impression that you are winning. You're a winner in the investment world at large. And you can even just after you see the first page, you don't have to read the rest of it because you're doing just great. And if you really took a look at it, and if you really had someone like an accountant to take a look at your returns, looking at your investments, or someone with some kind of investment grade, whatever, know-how, they would tell you the bitter reality, the real truth of how you're really doing. Uh, because in the world in which we live, unless you're generating 5 to 7% a year in gross returns, you are breaking even. Under that, you're just breaking it. So, so if your fund tells you, oh, 4.8% return on your money, your asset growth is doing, you're losing. You're losing. You are poorer now than you were yesterday, than you were last year, five years ago. You've been a loser for years. The winners are your managers who are sending you these statements and are being taken on trips around the world and going to conferences everywhere. And the higher ups are going on private jets everywhere else you're the loser. Um, you have got to take control of your life if you want to make your life really something special. I'm sorry to break it to you. Nobody out there gives a crap on how you're doing. They don't care. They care about themselves and their organizations and they're under pressure from their bosses to get your money into their firm to manage it. And then they don't talk to you anymore. That person you talk to about opening an account and uh, setting up this equity situation in this reinvestment thing, and we did this uh, analysis of your risk tolerance level. Those people are moved on to thousands of others that are trying to suck in to the firm. And maybe the firm, the people that brought you into the firm have been let go because they weren't working hard enough to get enough saps in. And so they were let go and they've gone elsewhere. I doubt very much that any of you out there, uh, really, uh, maybe 1% of you are still dealing with the same investment advisor you were dealing with 10 years ago. I bet you some of you out there have had a revolving door of investment advisors who introduce themselves to you every two or three years. Hi, I'm... I'm Jeannie. I'm your new, uh, you know, I've taken over your portfolio. We have, ex we have some really exciting things coming up this year. Uh, you, you, are you getting those kinds of calls or texts or emails? You have a new person handling your account. You know what that means? You've been downgraded. You've, you've been moved down the notch, down the pile. You're now always being looked after by someone who just got out of university in the last couple of years. They're rookies. You're not being looked after by the senior VP in the area or your state or your territory or whatever. No, you're being looked after by grunts who have a script when they talk to you. Honestly, they talk to you on the phone. They are reading from a prepared text. They cannot say what they want to say. They're not allowed to talk to you like human beings. They have to follow the story from lawyers. Uh, everything is vetted through the legal department. And boy, is it ugly. Look, it's like anything else, okay? You want to get something done, you got to do it yourself. And for those of you out there who have tried to do things yourselves, you're not perfect. I know that. I'm not perfect. But you're probably a hell of a lot better than someone else who doesn't give a crap about what it is you do. If you have a million dollars with an investment firm out there, you are a nothing burger because the firm that has that money of yours is probably sitting on a billion or four billion dollars for that branch. You're a million out of billions. How many 
minutes of time are you going to get from those 25 employees inside that branch? An hour a year? Maybe. Uh, you're a nothing burger. You got to take it over yourself. Speaking of taking things over, did you see what Noto did last night? Uh, did you see SoFi last night? Uh, looking good, huh? I like what I see there. 758, 760, you know, we're in this hood right here. Um, we were at seven, $6.87 yesterday morning. $6.87. I know for a fact there was a viewer here yesterday who mentioned I bought stock yesterday at 690 something like that. Because a bunch of you for the last week and a half have been scooping up stock on SoFi as it's been going down, down, down. And I have been asked, openly asking the question, openly asking the question, why would anyone sell SoFi at seven bucks a share, six ninety-five a share, six eighty-six? Why would you sell it? What in God's green earth is making you sell stock of SoFi in the six eighty level? knowing theoretically knowing what you should know now again maybe there's the answer right there they don't know what they're supposed to know they were promoted into the stock by a pump and dump channel somewhere or a pump and dump blogger or vlogger or, or promoter or i don't know and they thought oh i'll get in at eight and it'll go to twenty dollars a share it's gonna be great it used to be 25 when it first came out it's a hot stock they don't know anything about sofi i haven't got a clue and at seven they gave up well, I'm sorry. Uh, if you don't put anything into understanding what you're doing, you're not going to get much out either. So, yeah, you're going to be hot and cold and winning and losing all the time. Uh, but there were people who were convinced to sell this stock in the last two weeks. And it's unfortunate because these are people who maybe a year from now, maybe six months from now, will someday hear from a friend of theirs, hey, have you seen that? Have you still got that SoFi stock? It's trading at $28 a share. And they're going to go, what? Oh, I got I got of it at $7. Uh, that's stupid is as stupid as is right, Joan. Uh, Juan, Juan, you got it. Juan, you're right. Um, yeah. Uh, you got to take the bull by the horns. Anoto did the right thing. He took the bull by the horns, went on Jim Cramer's Mad Money last night. Jim asked him a couple of questions, and he hit him with answers that just covered the entire spectrum of SoFi's activities. And Jim liked the answers. Uh, Jim very much liked the answers, and the viewers liked the answers. Because the stock at the time was 735, 745, something like that. It wasn't even 750 last night. Now we're at 758, 763, somewhere in that range. Uh, it's, it's caught on a little more. I predicted last evening on the uh, primetime live show, if you're a Gold Bingo member, you know that I talked about uh, SoFi last night. We talked about it. And I said to you guys who were here last night, all you Gold Bingo members, that uh, uh, you're going to see that those clips of Noto, and you're going to see his answers uh, regurgitated by dozens of sources this morning, all day today, and all day tomorrow. And it'll have an effect on the stock market. Here we go. That's what we're what we're watching. 1.8 million traded so far this morning. How high can these shares go? Uh, they can go to uh, limitless numbers, but where will they go and when do they go there? Um, I'm hopeful that we never will see six dollars again, but I can't guarantee anything like that. I'm hopeful that we're going to go through seven into the eight level very quickly. Um, I fully expect the shares will be fifteen to twenty-five dollars within a year, but um, we're at seven fifty-eight right now, so that's what we're at. So those of you who don't have this stuff, it's on sale. Those of you who have written cash secured puts already, it's still not too late to write more. Uh, those of you who uh, want to write call options against your stock, um, just sit tight. Let this thing get to fifteen bucks, and we'll talk about that because that's going to be a big deal around here, and we're going to be very busy doing a lot of option writing for sure. You guys are going to get rather nice and wealthy from SoFi, if you let it, if you let it make you wealthy. Um, I have seen too many times in my career as a stockbroker and branch manager and other hats I've worn where people sell too soon. They give up. They, they wear, they, they're just wearing themselves out. They, 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 they beat themselves up over a stock if it goes, 
goes up 20%, they panic that it's going too far, and it drops 10%, they panic it's going too low. They just can't get their heads around the fact that investing is a long-term thing, and you are an expert investor if you can do this. There are people who will never get that. They will never master this art, and that is why you folks who are with this channel make money because as an option writer, you know, you know, you need to learn to do this trick right here and let your options depreciate and crap into nothing so that you pay pennies to buy back contracts you sold for dollars. And you're making a lovely living off of shrinkage. And whether you're waiting for SoFi to go up and your cash secure puts to go down, whether you're doing credit spreads on NVIDIA stock or on Adobe or on Apple or on Microsoft or what. There are opportunities galore to make money in this business being an option writer. Like I said before, uh, millions of people in North America could quit their jobs right now. They can quit their jobs immediately and live off of their assets if they knew how to control them. If they knew how to manage their assets properly, they would get the maximum return from their assets, which would make beyond what they've ever seen on a monthly basis in their lives. They will make more money than they've ever made at work or ever will make at work. And that's the key right there. A lot of people out there thinking, oh, well, in five years, I'm going to have promotions. I'm going to be the head of that department over there, and I'm going to be a VP over there, and I'm going to get that. I'm going to be a highfalutin executive. Yeah, I'm going to be making big money. Um, kids, uh, there are people out there who thought 20 years ago that by now, 20 years later, oh, I'll be making 200000 a year, no problem. Um, the problem is, uh, there is a problem. Uh, the problem is that some people do actually get there. They do make 200000 a year. But they're spending the equivalent of 250000 a year by the time they got there. And they're broke. They're cash flowing checks, no matter what the check is. It's amazing how over the years, and many of you know this firsthand, you become the lifestyle of your salary and you're always broke. You're always short on cash. You don't, you don't, you don't put money in the one place that you are supposed to put money first to you. You put it into a car and watch it depreciate. You put it into furniture and watch it get dusty. You, you, you put it into a house that you're constantly fixing up and, and hoping it'll go up in value. And sure, over decades, maybe it will, but it might only do inflation. You're not getting richer. You're maintaining a level of lifestyle, no matter how much more money you're making. And this is the issue where people cannot quit their day jobs. They're addicted. They have to go back to work every day and they can't get out. And then they talk themselves into the fact that they're stuck in what they're in and they're going to stay that way. They talk themselves into the fact that, oh, well, this is the best job I can get. This firm takes good care of us. Um, the health care here is better than I can get anywhere else. They find excuses or they think they find excuses to not better themselves. And that's the trap of the middle class, the trap of the middle class. The successful, the entrepreneurial, the, the, those who are the rule breakers, they break rules at every level. <coughs> they do stuff. They tell you in school you're not supposed to do. Uh, there are no university courses available uh, for entrepreneurship. Uh, no, no such thing exists. What we love, we, the average people, we love watching uh, television movies or, or movies and, and, and reading books about the people who become millionaires and billionaires because of the chances they take and the risks they take and the ridiculous stunts they pull off to get famous or to, to promote their company or what have you. Long shot stuff. We love stories like that. Oh, it's great. Hollywood. It's a Hollywood story. We love the Hollywood story. I can tell you around here, um, you don't need to believe in that stuff. Uh, you, can you can entertain yourself and follow stories like that, of course. And if it motivates you, great. I love stuff like that. I really do. But I got to tell you guys, um, if you've got 20 grand lying around, you got access to $20,000, which nowadays is not a lot of money. I mean, you know, 
if you're looking at 20 grand as the most money you've ever seen in your life, well, <laughs> you got a problem. <laughs> but if you've been around a while and you realize, yeah, oh, 20 grand, geez, I got 150 grand equity in my house and I feel broke. I've got uh, three cars, two of which I should really get rid of. That would bring me 20 grand cash if I got off my ass and got rid of those things. Uh, if I rearranged my, my assets or if I borrowed against my 401k, which I'm allowed to do, I've been allowed to do this for five years. I've been allowed to borrow against my own 401k and I can pay off that car loan, that credit card and that credit card and lower my cost of living by a thousand a month. And I don't do it. Why? Because I'm freaking lazy. I'm fat and lazy and I get a check every two weeks and I'm living within my means. And I don't, I don't better myself. And you know what? Your 30s are gone and you're now in your 40s. And you're not as pretty as you used to be. I'm sorry. You're overweight now. And you're not as strong as you were anymore. And guess what's awaiting for you? What's coming to you in the next decade or two? Health issues. The, the exit strategy is coming at you, whether you like it or not. And whether you are executing the exit strategy or it's coming at you from behind, your days of being fat, lazy, and uh, content won't last much longer because life is going to get you and it's going to beat you up. I'm sorry to depress you. I'm sorry. If I'm, if I'm waking you up, though, maybe I'm doing you a favor. I'm trying to give you a Will Smith dope slap. Wake the hell up and take control of your life and make it what it can really be. Sh shock yourself. Shock yourself yourself that you can actually do this forget about what the neighbors think and your friends think and your relatives think forget these people it's you it's all about you and your future and whether it's just you know bruce i'm gonna get back together i'm gonna to borrow 50 grand on my damn 401k and i'm gonna reorganize my life i'm gonna pay 20 grand and debts off and i'm gonna take 30 grand and i'm going to do option writing like you talk about i'm gonna take your classes i'm gonna have a one-on-one -on -one with you i might have a couple of those and I'm going to become an option writer and I'm going to use this cash to make cash. And you're going to find what you already know. Your money can work harder for you than you can work for you. No question about it. When you're 23 years old, you can work as long as you want to work, as hard as you want to work. You've got endurance and you're great. When you're 43, you don't do that anymore. You think you work as hard as you always work, but you're really uh, spinning your tires here. You, you, you've stopped moving forward you're just trying to maintain your ground here make your money work for you and take care of the bills um why don't you live off your money and you can live if you're an, if you're an expert at living off of cash flow you're going to be an expert living off your money's cash flow <laughs> you're going to be a mega expert you don't need a course on how to do that it's so easy it's actually easy that's the scary thing about it. Once you get into this, you realize that this isn't very hard. I thought this was going to be really complicated. Uh, Bruce, I, I'm not good at math. You know, I thought this was going to be really difficult. Then you realize these things right here have all these uh, apps and all these uh, brokerage firms have all of these uh, um, uh, programs built into them to help you calculate your returns and your risk factors and all that. And you're going, wow, this is, I mean, what Bruce is showing me to do is in here too. I, now I know what this stuff means. Now I understand when the brokerage firm tells me that if I do this credit spread, this will be the net proceeds, blah, blah, blah. Um, I know why. I know why. The, and I know now this is garbage. This is garbage returns. This isn't, this isn't a very good return at all because I'm not going to hit the bid and work on the offer. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm doing stink bids and stink offers because that's what Bruce taught me to do. Bruce has shown me how to take my money and make it work for me efficiently at maximum capacity rather than giving away thousands of dollars in stupid trades. Bruce also has helped me stop making investment mistakes. Can't tell you how many people out there have hundreds of thousands of dollars that they're, you know, that is working for them, and they're losing twenty thousand a year on stupid investments or dumb moves, uh, or uh, again fees of two percent upfront plus a percentage of profits. They're they're making other people rich on their money, and that's not the point. Your money is supposed to make you rich. You're supposed to make money off your money, not for someone else. And there are things you can do and how you can do them to make it work for you you want to get motivated why don't you uh, drive around your hometown 
your city where you live one day, why don't you take a Saturday? Why don't you go for a ride in your car to the nicest neighborhoods in your town or the rich live or just out, out of town, you know, those acreages just around town. Why don't you just ride around there for a while? Just take a look. Go to the coffee shop in the nicest part of town for a cup of coffee. Take a look around the room. Are you one of those people? These folks are in the high demographic neighborhood. You could be one of those people easily. Uh, it doesn't take much. Uh, we got to get you out of the middle class and into the upper middle class. Uh, you, 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 you deserve it. You're smart. You're hardworking. You're honest. You're loyal. You're, you're everything the employer ever wanted you to be. You're the best husband. You're the best wife. You're the best child. You're the best uncle. You're the best cousin. You're the best grandpa. You're the best grandma. You're the best. You're super. Everyone loves you. But you're not doing very well financially. Um, you're a giver, and that's great. But, you know, you need more to give. And why don't you make more so you can give more? If you feel better about giving more away to others, why don't you make more first? Then it's easier to give more away. Um, it's just there. Uh, classes are available from yours truly. Um, if you don't know already, uh, head to my website and check them out. Everything is down below in the description of this video. All right, I don't have to show you this every day, do I? But get your act together and make it happen now. Uh, many of you said to yourselves, sometime in the last five years, every one of you has probably said to yourselves on New Year's Eve that starting next year, I resolve to do this. I want to do this. I want to do that. And it never happened. Many of you have had year after year of uh, New Year's resolutions fall by the wayside, including I'm going to improve my financial life. I'm going to make myself better as a money manager or as an asset manager. I'm going to get my act together and try to figure out what the hell's going on with these retirement funds. I've had four jobs in 15 years and I got a plan over there. And I got a plan. Over, I got to get them all together. I got to consolidate them and I got to take control of them. Get off your duff and do that with an objective of being the manager of your own money. It is time to gather your assets up and get control of them so that you can make them do what you want them to do rather than leave them to others who are stealing from you. They are ripping you off. Cut it out. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I love you. Uh, 760 on SoFi. Where are we going today? Are we going to 8 bucks today? Is this possible? If we go to 8 would we go to 850 tomorrow? Like, is this just going to be a run now? What's going to happen here? I don't know. We're, we're on March 21st. We have 10 days to go, and it's the end of the first quarter. We know here, we know SoFi is making money this quarter. We know that. We also know they're making 40 to 60 million more money in for this next year because they just did that $840 million deal, knocked off that 12.5% interest deal they had. So we know that. Uh, so we know a lot of good things about SoFi. Uh, if the question is, is the street figuring it out? And if the stock starts to move up, does the street go, what's going, what's going on with SoFi? Uh, what, what, what have I missed? Well, they've missed a lot. They'll catch the Noto interview. They'll catch press releases that have been done. They might watch this show. If you give me a thumbs up, YouTube will promote the show to people who don't know you'll usually watch this show. Then they'll start watching this show. They'll hear me talk about SoFi. They'll go, wow, what a great company. They'll buy the stock. Your stock that you're already in will start going higher because new people are buying it. You just made yourself richer by giving me a thumbs up. Is it sim it, it, Can I make it any simpler than that? We should be having 38,900 people watching me right now. There are 389 people watching me right now. If we had 100 times more people watching me right now, or 1,000 more people watching me right now, we'd be talking to a whole lot of new potential SoFi shareholders. Only you can bring more people into this show. Let the word out that we love SoFi. Or let the word out, hey, you want to take control of your life. Why don't you watch this guy for a while? He'll wake you up. He'll give you a dope slap every once in a while. Maybe that's what you folks need out there. Hello? Take control of your life. <laughs> oh, so much fun. So much fun. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Alberto, thank you for this uh, donation. Uh, wow. When all were... Uh, when all were running around like chickens with no heads, your video in plain English gave me... Uh, SoFi, any investor, SoFi investors, the calm needed, solidified by Noto himself, you are the goat, and I am grateful. Thank you, my friend. Um, 
it's funny, you know, um, Alberto and uh, and uh, uh, Beach Boy, and Jr. and uh, many many others. So the names you see here all the time on my uh, on my you know chat bar there. Uh, if their names are in green, they're members, and if they're members, they're here all the time. Uh, a high number of these folks uh, never did, knew nothing about option writing uh, before they came here. They, had, they, they, they would just buy stock and try to sell it, make some money. Um, now they're option writers, and they're investors, and they have taken control of their lives, and they've, you know, decided, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be the one in charge of this deal. Um, and their lives have been changed. No, no question about it. Absolutely, absolutely. I get, I get told this all the time. Um, I get told this by newbies. I get, to, I get told this by people who've been here a month or two or three. They go, I can't believe in three months what you've done, what you've helped me do. Uh, three months ago, my investments were a basket case. I was lost. I was a mess. I was just going to sell everything and never invest again because I was just a loser. Then I find you, and, and you help me figure out what the hell's going on in plain English. And and now I'm learning all about option writing, and I'm making money. I'm I'm making money. I have lost hundreds of thousands of dollars over 20 years. I, I've lost, 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 lost. But the way this is going, um, I might be completely even within the next six months, just because I'm following your your ideas about how to write options. It's I can't believe how easy this is, and I can't believe this is legal. I didn't know I could do this. I didn't think I would be allowed from the brokerage firms out there to be able to do what I'm doing now because I thought this was the purview of mutual funds and hedge funds and ETFs, professional money managers. You had to be connected. You know, you had to have like billions of dollars and, and, and only the Wall Street pros would you let you do these kinds of trades. I had no idea I could do this off a phone. I grab a coffee, I go to my couch, I watch TV, I do a trade or two, then later in the day, I go to the bathroom, I have a pee, I take my phone with me, and sometimes I do a trade from there. It's unbelievable. I can't believe I, I am, I'm, I'm in this business in my level, in my demographic, and it's working even for me. I make the same percentage money that the pros make in New York. That's right. You better have the knowledge of how to do it. Now look, all of you get a driver's license, you're allowed to drive a car. And if you can drive a car and you live downtown and you need to take someone to the airport, it kind of helps if you know how to get to the airport. That's the difference between people who do drive and don't drive all the time. Those who drive all the time pretty well know how to get to the airport. Those who don't drive all the time are going, how do we get to the airport? Um, but yet you all have a driver's license. There are good drivers. There are not good drivers. In the stock market, there are good investors and there are stupid investors. And there are saps who just give away their money and do it for decades and figure this is normal. They've, they've adjusted and accepted the fact that they're probably going to lose money in the stock market. And yet they keep investing, hoping for the home run ball. Ridiculous. Welcome to the channel today from wherever you are on this planet. Thank you for the thumbs ups this morning. Appreciate those. Uh, let's see what else is going on this morning on our stocks. Let's see who's doing what. Um, we're going to open in about 25 minutes now. <coughs> We've got the Dow up 121. This follow through uh, seems to be happening here from yesterday's uh, Powell speech and the vibe from the Fed and all that, still pretty good. We're up 25 on S&P. We're up 176 on NASDAQ. NASDAQ is up almost a percentage point, but the Dow is only up a third of a percentage point. It's not leading the market higher. And yet Dow stocks are typically dividend paying stocks, and it's not leading the way. And you would think that with lower interest rates, dividend stocks would go up more than non-dividend paying stocks. Because if you own IBM and get 3% or 3.5% dividend yield, every quarter you get a payment of, in, of, of dividends, works up 3.5% a year, and the interest rates are going to drop, that means the 10-year treasury won't pay as much, um, hedge funds won't pay as much, uh, ETFs that are tied to interest rate, they will pay less. Your bank account will pay you less than your savings account. That would mean IBM will go up because they're not going to cut their dividend. 
Just because the Federal Reserve cuts interest rates doesn't mean IBM cuts its dividend. No. As a matter of fact, the thinking is, if interest rates go down, then businesses around the world will do better. And a company like IBM that deals with every S&P 500 business will make more money. And if IBM makes more money, they'll pay more money to the shareholders in an increased dividend. And they'll have a dividend raise. So if you own IBM stock long term, you've noticed that every once in a while you, you get this much in dividends for a few quarters, and then oh, you get this much in dividends, and then oh, you get this much in dividends, and oh, you get this much. They always raise their dividends all the time. So you would think that, uh, that the, the Dow 30 right now would be going higher. The Dow 30 Industrial Index, which has IBM in it, you'd think would be running, front-running NASDAQ, that NASDAQ stocks would be trailing the Dow. But they're not. The NASDAQ is outrunning the Dow. Now, what the hell is going on? Why is that? Because, again, if interest rates do go lower, it's good for all businesses not just IBM's business, but all of IBM's clients and competitors and companies like NVIDIA and Apple and Microsoft and uh, Facebook and uh, Google and you name, you name the big Magnificent Seven and then name the other 500 S&P 500 companies and name all 2000, Russell 2000s, name all the companies and all the private mom and pop companies around your neighborhood, our world, wherever you have it, how many millions of businesses will do better with lower interest rates? They all will do better. Even your household will do better because if your mortgage is coming up for renewal, instead of renewing at seven, seven and a half, eight percent, you might be offered a six, six and a quarter percent renewal or a five and three quarter percent renewal. And you'll go, whew, that was close. I thought I was going to pay eight percent interest in, in my next mortgage, and now I'm at five and three quarters. Well, that makes a difference. Yeah, it does. It's better for all. And so in the NASDAQ world right now, that is an that is an index full of growth stocks. High tech growth, aggressive growing companies, NASDAQ. So if growth stocks are going to outperform Dow stocks in corporate outperformance, their their shares will go higher faster sooner. And that's why NASDAQ is up right now, almost a full percentage point, and the Dow's up 0.3. So they're all up. They're higher. It's just that they're not higher at the same amount. Interesting, isn't it? Oil down 22 cents a barrel, 81.05. Uh, taking a look here on a uh, couple of uh, stocks we like to follow. I noticed that uh, Rocket Lab here has uh, been sitting around 415 this morning, up about 12 cents. We're at 760 on SoFi, up 24. GameStop is up 13 cents at 1362. They come up with their earnings on Tuesday. Matterport is up a penny. Um, over here on uh, Spire, we're at 1560. This is an interesting stock. They were 650 in January. Then they did a $12 private placement uh, for $10 million. Stock popped right away to the 8, 10, 11 range. Then it went 12, 13. Then they, uh, they announced. The group that bought the stock at 12 were reselling the stock to retail investors and uh, the stock popped to 14 and now it's uh, got to 17 or even hit 19 yesterday because now we find out there's a collaboration with NVIDIA going on with Spire and the stock went nuts yesterday. And so here we are, 1566 today. We're just everywhere, but this thing has done very, very well. Uh, Smart Rent is uh, at 264, down 4 cents. Apple is down a buck twenty-two. Goldman up one seventy-two. Cisco's up seven. Tesla's up a dollar twenty. Arc Innovations was up one seventy yesterday. It's up seventy-one cents more now. Fifty ninety-three. Microsoft is ahead by uh, three eighty-five. We're at four twenty-nine now. Pfizer's up five cents. HBQ up eight. Google up seventy-five cents. So it was up one seventy-six yesterday. One fifty now. Amazon up a dollar eighty four. It's one eighty a share. Nvidia up eighteen bucks, nine hundred and twenty two dollars a share. Unity up fifty one cents. AI is up fifty five. Gained thirty six yesterday. We're now at twenty nine twenty. Adobe up eighty six cents at five hundred twenty dollars. We've got Netflix up three forty one. The spiders are indicating a two forty eight gain, and the Qs are indicating a four twenty six gain right now. IBM is uh, down a dollar ten. Meta up six seventy six. Vanek Semiconductor ETF uh, is up six forty. It was up three forty yesterday. 
<clears throat> we got a ten dollar pop here, and we're at two twenty eight now on Vanek. Home Depot up three twenty three, Enphase up one twenty five. Palantir up 68, Uber up 85 cents, and Coinbase down, is up 381 after being up 26 yesterday. Crypto, all about crypto. There is the story. I'm sticking to it um, as we are wait, awaiting the opening in 18 minutes from now. Uh, thank you all so much for, um, for being here and uh, coming through. And uh, by the way, we're doing a meet and greet. Have you heard? Have you heard the word? We're doing a meet and greet in Ontario, California at the Outback Steakhouse. This is the exact same place we had a meet and greet back in December of 2021. We're going to have a get together. Uh, we have room for about 35 people and lunch is on us. Jen and I are treating you to a bite to eat at uh, Outback. Grab the menu, order whatever you want, enjoy. Uh, we'll cover coffee, tea, soda, but if you want a little spirit, an alcoholic spirit, that's your tip. But hey, come on out, see us, come and meet us, and we'll do some selfies, and we can chat, and we'll have a little Q&A, and a little get together. I love it. Uh, it's noon. Uh, the uh, the uh, time is noon, 12 noon, to about oh, two to three hours. I'm thinking by three o'clock, we'll probably be done. Um, October 13th, that's a Saturday. October the 13th, in Ontario, California, at the Outback Steakhouse. Look it up on Google. It's right next to the Ontario Mills Shopping Mall. If you occasionally are down in that area, if you're a Californian or you come down here once in a while, you will know the Ontario Mills Mall. It is massive, humongous. You'll, you might tie in a visit to the Ontario Mills Mall after you see us. Um, and walk around that place. It is huge. I mean, just to walk inside around it, it'll take an hour and a half. It's massive. Any event, uh, look forward to having you come out and see us. If you would like to join us, uh, please do me a favor. Send me an email and tell me who's coming. Uh, let me know if you are coming or bringing a guest. Um, once we get to the 30-35 level, we're going to have to cut it off. Um, I'll talk to the Outback <clears throat> it's possible that some of you might end up inside the restaurant eating there um, because there's just no room in the, on the outside. I don't know how many are coming. I don't know how many of you will show. Uh, but um, if you let me know, that will help us a lot, okay? Uh, I'll keep, we'll keep mentioning this as we get closer. But uh, it's now official. It is officially April the 13th, Saturday at noon at the Outback Steakhouse in Ontario. And we'd love to have you join us. So become a member and come on out. And that would be super. Okay, everybody. Thank you all. Appreciate you uh, for being part of this family. And, uh, and uh, look forward to seeing you live in person in Ontario, California, not in Canada. Um, and uh, that would be great. Okay, thank you all. Um, what else is going on here? Uh, folks are talking to each other left, right, and center. Appreciate that. Uh, thank you all uh, for... Uh, sharing your thoughts with me and with everyone else out there. Um, I'm excited for you guys. Uh, the, the upside of, of SoFi has not even been near realized at this point in time. It's going to be something. Uh, thank you again. Thanks again to those of you who have found a way to hit the thumbs up button and give us a bit of momentum there. Much appreciated. Uh, we have 186 thumbs ups here. We're opening in 15 minutes. So Lovely to see 200 thumbs up before the opening already. That is awesome sauce stuff. Thank you. Uh, what else is going on? Um, oh, we got an announcement coming out here from Spire. Uh, thanks, Charlie, for this. Uh, direct offering of $30 million in stock um, being done here. Let's see what this says. Uh, this is a release from Spire. Um, it says here, Spire Global announces a registered direct offering of $30 million um, uh, they are, uh, they've entered into a securities purchase agreement with two institutional investors for the purchase and sale of 2.1 million shares of Class A common stock at $14 a share and will bring in $30 million uh, to the company. Um, the company's issued uh, the investors an option to acquire another 2.1 million shares at $14.50 uh, for another 100 days, which could bring in additional $31 million more. If they want to exercise that, this is being offered by an effective shelf rec registration statement. Uh, 
so th this is one of those uh, bought deals where the company is selling stock to uh, investment firms in a uh, in a uh, an arranged pre-sale, and they do it in two separate uh, uh, tranches: the guaranteed thirty million, uh, and then they offer them another thirty million behind it at fourteen fifty a share. This would put sixty a uh, billion dollars of stock, or four point three million roughly, of shares into the hands of ultimately investors because the brokerage firms buy the stock and then redistribute the stock to their clients. And this is exactly what you want to hear. This is exactly what you want to know. That number one, Spire is going to be sitting on 60 million cash additional to what they've already got. And two, they're issuing 4.3 million shares in two pieces at 14 and 14.50 a share. And that means, number three, you have added liquidity to the stock. You've got Wall Street involved in the distribution. It's like an IPO. And uh, the option market will be refreshed. So watch over the next month or two. As all of this goes through, we may see Spire trade in the $15, $20 neighborhood with options being reignited again. And we'll see what's going on. Because you were asking me, some of you were asking me yesterday, what about options, Bruce? So they don't have much in the way of options. Is there going to be option activity? Now, they are dealing with NVIDIA um, with a, uh, you know, they're partnering with NVIDIA on weather, um, weather forecasting AI applications and whatever that means. I don't care. Just use the word NVIDIA in any press statement you're going to make. And so maybe there's something to this deal. We'll see what happens. So anyway, there you go. Uh, Charlie, thank you. Um, I, I love that when you do that. Um, I just happened to glance at my emails and I saw the headline there. It just came through. How about that? Isn't that fun? Um, thank you. Thank you. And uh, again, those of you who are coming out to the meet and greet, send me an email. Tell me you're coming. Tell me uh, if you're coming on your own or are you bringing a guest with you. Um, that way, Jen and I can figure out the list of who to expect. And we then will know when to cut off the invites. And we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, thank you all. And I appreciate you uh, uh, hanging around. Uh, we're up 117 on the Dow. And that's now still 0.29 of a percentage point. That's it. S&P's up 24, half a percent. NASDAQ up almost 1%, 171 at the moment. This is good stuff. What Spire has done in the last uh, six weeks has been very good. Uh, I'm very impressed with what Spire has done with their shares, their corporation. They are they are now going to have a total of 70 million additional cash in their bank account. If they pull off these moves, they will have added 70 million cash into their account. Um, they are debt free. They're turning cash flow positive, and Wall Street likes what they do. This is good stuff. I've always thought that uh, Rocket Lab and Spire would make a good team if they merge together, but uh, obviously Spire has had their plans ongoing because this didn't come up overnight. None of this, none of these announcements I'm telling you about for Spire happened like just last night. This has been ongoing discussions for months, and it's now coming to fruition. Very interesting stuff. And on the SoFi front, kids, if you think Noto's finished with uh, his moves, that Noto has just done this $845 million deal and it's all done now. And uh, no, you know, so far will be the same a year from now. Think again, okay, wake up. Um, there's a whole lot more coming on SoFi's uh, corporate front, a whole lot more. All designed to enhance common shareholder values, book values, everything else. Um, SoFi awareness. There could be takeovers, there could be mergers, there could be other entities. There's deals uh, in the works, I'm certain. I would bet you that NBA deal took six months to negotiate, and it came out a month ago. There are probably deals that are months into discussions that are about to be released to the rest of us. We're going to find out a lot of stuff about SoFi that they've been working on. They can't talk about it allowed to it's all under confidentiality agreements same with the other parties they can't say a word so don't be surprised if you see announcement after announcement after announcement about sofi and its ever expanding network of connections and deals and uh, collaborations and what have you 
all destined and designed to add value to the shareholders, to the company, and make them a lot more money. So $7.55 is where it's at. It's cheap. It is dirt cheap right here, just so you know. That's my opinion, and that's where I'm taking it. Uh, what can I say? Thank you all so much. Luca, I'm here in Copenhagen, 198 thumbs up today. That's a beautiful place, a beautiful city. I really, uh, Jen and I enjoyed Copenhagen last summer. It was pretty cool to see. Thank you all very, very much uh, for, for being here and joining us today. We're going to go member only now on the comments section. Please become a member of this channel, whether you're a chillin' with Uncle Bruce member or becoming a full-blown out-and-out Gold Bagel member. If you do, we will try to make it very worth your while, uh, especially for Gold Bagel members. We will work very hard to make sure that that 25 a month cost is a nothing burger because of the trade tips that you're going to get as a Gold Bagel member will more than make up for it. Thank you all very much for joining us and, and being with us. 201 thumbs ups and counting. They keep coming in. I appreciate it uh, very much. Yesterday's show, uh, we ended up with 353 uh, thumbs ups. The day before that, 339. The day before that, 410. The show before that, 345. The show before that, 436. Thank you, all of you, with these thumbs ups uh, coming through here. It is incredible to see, and it is much appreciated. We have 81,010 subscribers of this channel. If you haven't subscribed, shame on you. It's free. Uh, join this channel. Become a subscriber. You'll get alerts every time I do a show, a video, an update. Uh, it's <laughs> worth your while to know maybe what we're talking about here. If you follow certain stocks that we follow, you might want to become a subscriber of this channel or a, a member and uh, become like uh, the folks here, Savage of Wall Street, not a worker anymore, Alberto, and others. Uh, thank you all for that. 212 thumbs ups and counting. Lovely. I thank you. Uh, thank you again, Uncle Bruce, for the email earlier. You got it, buddy. Um, Roshan is here from Helsinki. Uh, Klaus, sorry, RDW, not RDA. Welcome, Klaus. Savage of Wall Street. Good morning, my fellow simpletons and degenerates. I hope everyone is well today. Uh, not a lurker. Savage just woke up. Savage, uh, uh, how you uh, how you know what's going on here? Uh, welcome all, welcome all, welcome all. Um, nice to have you here this morning. We're uh, six minutes away from opening up uh, the sh the show, We're opening up the day, the trading, and we'll see what's going on. Bank of England is holding the line on interest rates. No surprise there. Seven fifty five on SoFi. We've already been at seven sixty three or something like that. Very interesting. It'll be interesting to see how the stock opens in the first half hour to an hour. Um, should be a lot of fun. Um, no, Savage is saying, I've been awake for a few minutes, just logged in after listening to Uncle Bruce for 20 minutes. Excited since I kept buying SoFi under $7 lately, and I'm also selling $7 cash secured puts for Jan 2025. They are looking pretty good here. Uh, yes, the stock goes higher. Those put contracts go lower, and all of a sudden, those top dollars you've been collecting, it costs you a whole lot less to buy them back. Profits being made as these shares inch higher, 760 right now in the pre-market. Uh, over 2 million traded in the pre-market. You got to love the way that's going. Uh, thank you very much. Um, what else is happening out there? NVIDIA today, $920 a share, up 1650 in the pre-market. Uh, we have seen already 922 923 for the high today in this pre-market on NVIDIA. Very interesting. There seems to be an NVIDIA SoFi connection. There seems to be some kind of, um, uh, uh, I don't know what to word, I don't know how to word it. It's not, it's not a business partnership. It's nothing like that. It's not like NVIDIA bought stock in SoFi, although that would be pretty cool. Um, but there seems to be a, uh, thingy here where where nvidia is telling its employees that uh sofi is they recommend sofi as a bank to their employees i guess that's the way i should say it that that nvidia recommends sofi as a banking option for their employees because sofi offers all kinds of services including apparently you can get a, t a, a mortgage for a house with only 10 percent down if you're an employee of nvidia 
probably under certain circumstances, I would imagine if you own stock in NVIDIA through your 401k, SoFi will qualify that as uh, good enough to get a 90% mortgage. Uh, it's not a bad thing. It's certainly a good thing. Is it a, is it a market mover for SoFi? Doesn't hurt. Yeah, it doesn't hurt, but it, it's not going to turn the company around. With SoFi pushing 8 million view, uh, members, 8 million members, and 29,000 employees at NVIDIA, you know, if 10,000 employees are, are using SoFi services or 15,000, uh, I don't know, um, is the deal, like, if you work in NVIDIA and you get paid every two weeks or however you get paid, do they automatically deposit that money into a SoFi account for you? I don't know. Does, does anybody here, is anyone here watching me that works at NVIDIA or is there anybody here who knows somebody? that works at NVIDIA and can find that out. Uh, how involved is SoFi with NVIDIA's employees? Is it involved right at the payroll level? I, I would love to know. If anyone can find that out, by all means, send me an email, let me know. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome, 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 everyone. Uh, it's uh, great to see all of you here. Uh, Flint Creek, thankfully, Dad listened to me and he bought NVIDIA around 300 bucks a share. Gid the up. We are two minutes away from opening up. Um, the Savage of Wall Street numbers. I sold ten thirty dollar Unity covered calls for July yesterday, and uh, the stink bids were at uh, two fifty five. I sold at two fifty five. I guess I figured, yeah, too stinky, but whatever. And boom, sold them in uh, the morning. My average on Unity is twenty four dollars. Take me out at thirty, <laughs> or I roll, laugh out loud. Nice going, uh, fantastic. Uh, well, well, well. Let's go, baby. Let's get this market started, and let's get trading underway. We're very close to opening up here for the session, and uh, we're excited, to say the least, uh, about what we have going on here. Um, what will the market do today? We were up 401 yesterday on the Dow, so uh, another rally seems to be, this rally seems to be continuing, but it is only 118 more at the moment on the Dow. The first half hour, hour, we have a little uptick. We may back off a little bit. Then we might surge as the day wears on. We, we'll have to watch that. It's what we do. Thank you all very, very much. Um, here we are. Uh, Flint uh, saying, uh, Bruce, for your meet and greet, I can ship out a box of cashmere. Uh, I will email you. Feels like it's a, a tradition that you hand out Flint Creek soap at the meet and greet in Ontario. That would be great. Um, have to get to the address uh, here and uh, we'll figure that out um let's go baby uh let's run this market up and go 401 point game yesterday we're up 121 right now we're up 25 on s p and we're up 177 nasdaq and we're about to open now uh, for the session so welcome all and uh and let's see just what's going on uh, fun 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 um uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see what's happening here. Um, waiting for the opening to come through for the day today. Okay. All right, Bell. There they are. The bells have been rung. Fantastic. Savage is saying, hey, guess what? I used the $2,550 that I got writing those Unity options for Uncle Bruce to sell another Unity $25 cash secured put. That's what I did. Did that for July and I asked for $235 for that contract. Boom, I got it. And I used the $235 to buy more Matterport. Uh, is this how you do this? Uh, you take the money from option gamblers, put it into other trades, take that money and keep averaging down on your small stocks. Yeah, that's how you do it. And you just get richer and richer and richer. How about a door prize for a lucky person? Flint Creek is asking. Um, not workers going, woo uh, welcome all to the show. I mean, maybe we can do that too. I don't know. I, I, I hadn't thought of that. I've been just so busy just trying to secure the location and figure the dates and get everything together. It's not easy being me. Oh, my God. We're up 100 points to start the day. We're open, folks. The market has begun to trade, and we're going to find out in a few minutes just where are things really at. Uh, welcome all to the party. We're trying to... Uh, uh, watch right now another event, and that is that the Dow Jones is at 39,600, and the watch has begun. 40,000 on the Dow 
all-time high, of course, right now, 40,000 all-time high, high, high. Um, we're at 5,200 plus on S&P, NASDAQ at 16,500. But the next significant milestone, and it's just a number, Dow 40,000. We're watching for that, okay? Bill McNeil, Uncle Bruce, it's an employee benefit. My company has the same thing with many companies like car insurance, et cetera. Um, and Flint Creek, I will cover it, maybe add a lesson or something like that. Um, let's see what else is going on. Uh, thank you for uh, Flint. Uh, send me emails. We'll, we'll talk about that over there. I don't, I don't know. I have no plans at this point. Uh, we're going to spring for lunch for up to 35 people. So we're, you know, we're kind of <laughs> dropping a few dollars on that. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, Bill uh, agree. Not a bad thing. Other companies will pile in to bring this benefit to their employees. Uh, the SoFi benefit. Yeah, I'm curious whether SoFi is already on a tear and is attracting all kinds of corporate, uh, um, I don't know what to call it. It's not sponsorships. It's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's recommendations to employees, you know, use SoFi. Uh, you know, we, we think, you know, our employees get great benefits using SoFi. I don't know. I don't know how to market. I don't know how to explain it but nvidia employees are definitely being promoted into sofi banking that's definitely what i am hearing so far i'm curious if anyone else sees that through their firm if any of you heard of anyone else mention it through their company um and what kind of relationship really is it i don't know how deep does it go i i can't say but hey they're doing something absolutely we're up 158 on the dow right now up 26 on s p up 139 on nasdaq NASDAQ is up 0.85 of a percent. S&P is up a half a point, the Dow 0.44. So that's looking pretty good. Okay, says Flint. I got it. Yep, I'll do that. Fantastic, everybody. Thank you all for joining in today. Uh, we're now up 180 on the Dow Jones. We're climbing quickly here. The pre-market was obviously uh, not indicating what was really going on. The opening three minutes, we've got money moving into the Dow stocks. They're now up 0.45, uh, NASDAQ 0.87, the s and up a half a percentage point. SoFi right now, 746, 740, 745, uh, up 11. We'll see how SoFi uh, reacts in the next half an hour. Um, for 6.5 million traded on SoFi in four minutes. That is substantially more than the last several days. Uh, we have not had this kind of volume in the, in, the, in the opening minutes for the last, what, five, six days in a row. There's definitely buying interest coming in. To me, I think the plug of resistance is being bought out. It's just being taken out, and it'll break through 750, and it could go to 775, eight bucks. It could do that today. It could, but I think we're going to need 80 million, 100 million volume to really go on it. Um, will that happen? I don't know. I have no idea how the street will absorb the events from last evening. Will they view it as positively as we have? Because we understand what it means. I don't know if the rest of the street gets it yet. 745 right now on SoFi at this moment. Okay. Uh, we're up 15 on NVIDIA now, $919. Um, Spire, 1480 a share, uh, down 267 Absolutely expected to do that with the announcement of $2.1 million being traded at $14 and $2.1 million at $1450. This makes sense. Uh, this absolutely makes sense. 1466 on Spire. Uh, Wall Street is putting the boots on Spire big time. Seven million traded this morning on Spire. Guess what that means? That's seven million of the 2.1 uh, million plus the other 2.1. It's a done deal. This deal, I believe, has been completely done. Uh, my my hunch. Okay. Uh, no, sorry, I'm I'm incorrect. I'm sorry, I'm incorrect. I misread. Um, Seven million is so five volume. Sorry. <laughs> Spire volume, three hundred seventy-two thousand. Okay, the deal is not done yet. Okay, well, let's put it this way: three hundred seventy-two million is trading on the street. There could well be two point one million traded off the street on this bot deal. That, that's really what's going on. I, I was kind of puzzled by seven million going really. Uh, 372,000 have gone through Spire so far this morning, and that is much higher than normal, as you know. If you followed Spire the last six months, you know that in the first 10 minutes, it trades 2,000 shares, 5,000 shares. 
six three hundred thousand shares in six minutes on Spire. Very unusual. So obviously the float is being increased dramatically here. That's a good thing. Okay. Even I get confused as to what's going on. All right. Um, yeah, well, BW, well, I guess those uh, Spire rights yesterday are paying off. Uh, four nineteen twenty dollars Yes, sir. Let those go. Uh, one, Rocket Lab is rocking as well. Very nicely, apparently. It's four twenty two up $0.20 cents a share on Rocket Lab. JR, Flint Creek. Oops, sorry. Old man forgetfulness. There you go. Welcome all. Welcome all to the show here. We're up 190 on the Dow now. Adobe down $2. NVIDIA up 10 bucks. Spire 1405. So 744 up 8. GameStop 1363 up 15. Rocket Lab 424 up 21 cents. Um, and as Rocket Lab successfully launches fifth national security mission for NRO. That was done, um, the first launch of the National Reconnaissance Office from U.S. soil following four previous successful launches for the agency from New Zealand. So um, the Rocket Lab is launching rockets now from the USA for clientele, and this one was done out of Virginia, and that's not hurting the stock one iota. Remember, Rocket Lab has a backlog of over a billion dollars in orders. Well massive backlog and they just raised 355 million dollars on a cap call transaction financing um that's going to take the stock to eight bucks a share easily my humble opinion um there you go we're at 426 up 23 cents on rocket lab ai up 51 cents um uber's up a dollar uh, Apple down 132, Enphase up 338, AMD up three bucks, Netflix up 366, Tesla up 140. We've got uh, Unity up 55 cents, Google up 88, um, Cisco up 26, uh, Moderna up 85, Pfizer up 13, IBM still showing a negative 369 move at the moment, HBQ up 16, Microsoft up 483 a share. Um, let's see here, where, where, where am I? Here we go. Amazon up 221. Home Depot up 882. Vanek up 640. Goldman Sachs up 923. Boeing up 188. Meta up 550. Target down 120. JP Morgan up 122 at 197. Costco up $2. Walmart up 3 cents. Uh, Disney up 17. And American Airlines is up 12 to 14.69. AMC down a half a penny. DraftKings up 44. And Royal Caribbean up a buck as of this morning so rocket lab yes a successful launch the stock is up again uh that is what's going on everyone i'm sticking to this storyline we're up 200 on the down now 200.53 of a percentage point we're up 0.56 uh 29 point gain on s and b 0.92 percent gain on nasdaq 154 points and the oil market we're down 19 cents a barrel all right there you go. Uh, Luca is saying, I wonder who pays Seeking Alpha for all their negative articles on SoFi. Who pays those guys? I don't know. I don't know. SoFi, 750 now. Uh, just showing 750 a moment ago, up 14 cents. Spire, 1391 now, just under $14. Spire, 558,000 traded. That is much more than we've ever seen before. Uh, this is a new normal. Spire is increasing its float. Increasing cash on hand. Beautiful. Beautiful. Don't stop now. Keep it going, guys. Let's get going here. Fair enough. All right. Thank you all for, for popping in and, and seeing us. Uh, appreciate you all uh, joining in. Uh, 226 thumbs ups as of last report. 220, area, 225, 226. Thank you all for these thumbs ups. Uh, keep them coming in. Uh, we love you for it. Uh, thank you all for, uh, for supporting this channel. And... Uh, Letting the world know, come on over here. Uh, absolutely. A 222 gain now on the Dow. Looks like 240, actually. 240 point gain on the Dow. 0.63. We're equaling S&P up 0.64. And NASDAQ is 0.96. So the three markets are definitely on a roll here. There is more positive um, momentum coming in after the Powell speech. Um, and uh, corporate, uh, corporate uh, announcements looking Looking fine. We're looking just fine. 750 on your SoFi, up 13 cents. Volume now, SoFi, 8.9, 8.8 .8 million. So we're pushing 9 million now 
on the SoFi. Uh, we're up 21 on GameStop, 1369. Slow improvement there. Rocket Lab, 425 a share on a volume of 700. No, a volume of 950,000 on Rocket Lab, 425 a share. Almost a million Rocket Lab traded so far. Spire back to 1402 on 596,000. That's the story there. Um, very interesting announcement this morning on this uh, uh, registered direct offering. This is called a bot deal. Um, these are, we used to call them bot deals, where a brokerage firm would buy guaranteed X amount of shares at a set price from a public company through a prospectus, done. And then the brokerage firm would resell those shares to their clientele. That's how it would be done. And the broker would already have it pre-sold. The broker would have made calls all over the place. And a whole bunch of institutional investors, uh, hedge funds would be called, all kinds of their best clientele would be called. The reason the brokerage firm is doing a bought deal for Spire is they know that if they sell 4.3 million shares for Spire into the open market to their clientele, they have just funded the company with $60 million in cash on top of the $10 million they got a month and a bit ago. On top of the whatever $100 plus million they got, they're going to be sitting with $200 million cash, no debt, positive earnings, and all kinds of positive investor report reports coming out, buy recommendations coming out. So get ready for a show and a real promo job on Spire. That's what's going on, and that's what's happening. It's a good thing. Uh, there you have it. Welcome to the inner workings of Wall Street. We've been doing this since the 70s and before. Okay. All right. Um, you know what? Bill McDaniel is kind of wondering, I bet this employee benefit that SoFi has is already more widespread than we know. It could well be. There could be hundreds of companies that have already signed up with SoFi. I don't, I do not know. I, I, and this is the thing that maybe the market needs to know. Maybe, uh, the stock market will figure this out somehow when SoFi wants to talk about it. Like I, I don't, I know I had not heard Nvidia and SoFi on the same page until last night. I did not know that, but yeah, Nvidia and SoFi are kind of in a partnership relationship or in a not financial partnership, but certainly on the same, they're on the same page here. Uh, NVIDIA employees are utilizing SoFi's banking services and NVIDIA is encouraging their clients to do it, their employees. It's a good thing. This is, this is by far a, a, a fine thing. NVIDIA 909. I wonder how many NVIDIA employees are going to open up a 401k and IRA accounts at SoFi. And they're going to transfer their assets into SoFi's brokerage division and start trading there. SoFi is going to be attracting billions of dollars of assets from these employees of all of these corporations through all of their services, checking, saving, investing, mortgage lending, car loan lending, on and on, credit cards, you name it, it just expands out. There's no end to it. And for SoFi, they become a top 50 bank in America. They become a top 40 bank in America. S&P 500 listed, and away we go. It's a triple-digit stock. It's, so, it's just so obvious that I can't understand how any analysts out there are against this stock and tell customers to sell it. I can't believe it. I can't. I can't believe that up there that, that that's going on. Other other than the fact they just don't know, they're not aware of the depth of relationships that SoFi has with its clientele, and that it's growing in its influence with the leading companies of the United States. I mean, if you attract, you've attracted. NVIDIA to be promoting SoFi banking on NVIDIA's homepage to its own employees. How more legitimate do you need to get? I, I don't know how more legit you need to be to have convinced investors out there, oh man, these guys are the real deal. Yeah, Bank of America isn't being promoted. 
Wells Fargo isn't being promoted. SoFi is being promoted. AI intelligence, fintech bank, perfect marriage. Think SoFi is going out of business? Think again, people. Think again. There you go. 420 on Rocket Lab. 1360 on GameStop. 748 on SoFi. Well undervalued. That's it. Spire, 1352. NVIDIA, 913. Uh, Adobe, 918, down 92 cents. The Dow's up 242 points this morning. We're up 30 on S&P. We're up 142 on NASDAQ. There you go. Goldman Sachs is rallying big time. Intel is rallying big time to lead the Dow higher. Stocks that are moving, Micron, Apple, Accenture, Astera Labs, Astera Labs, Lee Auto, Five Below, Guess, Broadcom, and more. Um, that's the story at the moment, at this early, early moment, four, 17 minutes into the opening. Brian just started our day today. We haven't even started yet. Here we go. Will SoFi hit eight today? Maybe. Maybe it goes through 750, breaks into the 760, 70 range, and shoots past eight today. And all of a sudden, the shorters are going, uh, uh, we're down a dollar ten since yesterday afternoon from where we were. What, what, what's going on? Uh, yeah, that's that's kind of what I like to have happen. What, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Betting against SoFi children don't know. We need shorters. We really do. We need them to be exposed. We need them to be vulnerable. We need them to panic. That's uh, all we want. Uh, look, uh, uh, Ubi, what's up with Spire? It's up and down. Ciao, grazie from Italy. have been talking about it the last half hour. Um, yeah, we like what we see here uh, very much. Don't worry about the 396 drop in price. This is uh, temporary. These shares are going past 20 now. They're going to go. Uh, Spire will go. Uh, 757, 757,000 traded as they complete this uh, 4.3 million share bought deal redistribution of stock, massive increase in the float, and they'll probably uh, bring out a bunch of options. We just watch the next few weeks. All this take place. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. Bonjourno from Luca to uh, Ubi. A uh, splare, um, someone has to pay for our gains. Exactly. Uh, ciao, Luca. Ciao. There you go. The Italians are talking to each other. You gotta love that. Thank you all. Uh, we're up 189 on on the Dow. Adobe down 138. Um, Nvidia up 450. Spires at down four dollars at 1340. SoFi 742 up six. GameStop up six. Rocket Lab up 15. Welcome to the volatile market today. Um, that this is quote, completely normal. Um, we're open now. Uh, uh, 19. 20 minutes. We're open 19, 20 minutes. Very good. Uh, there you go. Uh, -wee. Mm, mm, mm. Bank of England holds rates steady as two voters reverse hike view. So slowly but surely, interest rates in Britain will start to drop probably in the next uh, quarter or so. Maybe a quarter point here, quarter point there. They have to drop in Europe. Europe is in a recession. New Zealand announced today that they've entered a recession. Uh, technically, they say, oh, yeah, shrinking economy two quarters in a row. We're in a recession. It's 0.1%. It's not the end of the world, but, you know, that's technically a recession. Um, there you go. Interesting uh, stuff. Um, and, uh, uh, Splair, you know, soon we're going to find out where the best pizza and pasta places are in, in Italy. We're going we're gonna to know. We got, we got people in the know around here. Uh, yes, indeed, I think we do. Giddy up. 203-point gain on the Dow again, up 25 in S&P. NASDAQ up 114. Welcome all to the show. Very nice. Very, very, very nice. Uh, let's see. Any other headlines we have to worry about here? Uh, Reddit is set for the Wall Street debut. Um, uh, we're waiting for that to happen. We're talking about a $34 IPO price. And uh, we'll see what it does when it's up there. Um, wait for options to come out, and then you'll be able to play the options on Reddit. We'll see how that plays. Um, what else is going on here? Uh, uh, Richard Branson is set for an $856 million payout from Nationwide's takeover of Virgin Money. Uh, he's got a bunch of stock in there, and he's going to win big. Um, 
And, uh, and uh, DWAC stock is soaring as the vote on the deal to buy Trump media is nearing. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, what else is going on here? Uh, ben and Jerry's ice cream is being sold uh, by its owners. We'll see how that plays. Uh, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, jobless claims dip to 210,000. Layoffs show layoffs show no sign of rising. That's very uh, positive. Again, uh, very interesting. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Uh, let's see. Uh, Turkey hikes its interest rates to 50%. Uh, so if you're looking to get a car loan in Turkey, uh, you're looking at a 50% interest rate for your car loan. Uh, come on in. Um, you know, lovely country. We're run by a dictator. He knows everything. He's he's just the best guy for the economy. Uh, uh, you know, with dictators, as dictators go, this guy is the best of the best with 50% interest rates. Just think. Think of the savings rates that you're being offered in Turkey. Oh, for you retired people <clears throat> and your 1,000% inflation, uh, think of the interest you're making on your non-money. Yeah. Yikes. Turkey, 50% interest rates. Good luck. There you have it. Uh, and what can I say? NVIDIA, 90865. SoFi, 746. Up a dime. Uh, thank you all for, for being through here today. Um, uh, let's see. I want to go to Italy, says Flint. 50% um, uh, interest in toilet paper. It is still toilet paper, uh, the big T is saying. There you go. <laughs> okay. Uh where we got here the dow up 221 uh right up there near the high of the day for the dow jones and uh 25 point gain s p nasdaq up 117 uh, okay the u.s dollar is rising today against the swiss franc uh because they cut their rates uh it's holding its own against the uh, the uh, uh the pound and the uh the euro uh holding its own um uh, let me take a look at treasuries right now. The 10-year treasury is 4.27%, which is kind of steady. Uh, we've got uh, currency now. Uh, Euro is slipping a little bit at 108.91. Uh, the yen is definitely falling back. Uh, it used to be the 148 levels, now 151. Takes more yen to buy a dollar. The pound, the pound at 127.11 is definitely dropping from 128. It's almost a penny off today. Canadian dollar has been dropping against the U.S. dollar as well. Uh, a little here, a little there, um, but not as much as some of these other currencies. And European markets had a very strong day going. We're up 1.8% in London. Um, we're up half a point in Germany, uh, but uh, France is only up 0.14 of a percentage point right now. So we'll see if that lasts. Uh, oil is down 27 cents in Texas at 81 flat now. And uh, we're up 207 on the Dow, 25 point gain on NASDAQ. Uh, no, 25 point gain on S&P, 118 on NASDAQ. Thank you all for uh, for thing. House GOP is undermining Trump with a call for a 2.7 trillion dollar uh, Social Security and Medicare cuts. So if you vote for your Republican uh, House member to be reelected and your Republican senator. Keep in mind that $2.7 trillion in Social Security and Medicare cuts are just around the corner from your friends at the Republican Party who are there for you to give you freedom to decide how you want to live in your country. Uh, God bless the Republicans with a $2.7 billion call in cuts to Social Security and Medicare. If you're in your 60s, it's happening to you. If you're in your 40s, it's happening to your parents. And if you're in your 20s, it's going to happen to everyone you know. And they're going to get cuts, cuts, cuts. And then you, as a 20-year-old and 30-year-old, you get to have mom and dad in the basement of your house because they can't live on their own anymore. The government won't pay. So now you pay. Uh, but that's if you vote Republican. You go ahead and bring your favorite politician to Wall Street, to, I'm sorry, to Washington. And you'll be just fine. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Wow, unbelievable. Uh, what can I say? Uh, <laughs> uh, 
too much fun, kids. I uh, love the uh, the election year posturing that we see all the time. Uh, bills that have no hope in ever making it to law get proposed by the wackos. And uh, today it's all about trillions in cuts in social programs so that corporations and rich people can get tax breaks. Um, yes, help your local millionaire get a bigger tax break. Uh, we'll just take it out of uh, those, uh, those slackers that are living off Social Security. We'll, we'll take it from them. They should, out, should be out there getting jobs rather than sitting in retirement homes anyway. Uh, lazy bastards. Get to work. Make money. Come on. There you go. <laughs> I wonder when these Republicans go back to their districts, how do the seniors feel that voted them in? <laughs> how do you feel? I don't know. I, 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 just, I just can't. I can't. I can't understand it. It is too cute to know. In any event, welcome to the party, everybody. Uh, I'm so glad you could join me today. I hope you're doing all right. I hope you don't mind the rants. Uh, what can I say? Um, what else is going on here? Uh, uh, I don't know what else is talking about here. Uh, oh, Trump is in line for a three and a half billion dollar windfall from his stake in his, uh, Truth Social. Um, okay. Um, yeah, let's go. Other headlines. A lot of political headlines these days in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, not so much business. Uh, kind of. Crazy. Uh, big corporate mergers get fresh tax scrutiny in Washington. There's a headline. Um, and uh, uh, Julian Assange and the De Department of Justice exploring guilty plea to end a 14-year legal drama. Working on that. Uh, let's go. China has just absolutely crushed Hong Kong's, Hong Kong's existence for um, any consideration to do business there. Uh, China has effectively killed Hong Kong off and has scared its locals and its foreigners to the point where um, hundreds of thousands of Hong Kong uh, 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 residents are leaving uh, the area. Apparently, the demand for, um, for, uh, for, uh, uh, visas, travel visas, um, uh, or, or immigration visas. Uh, 200,000 Hong Kong citizens have applied to migrate to the United Kingdom since China imposed a national security law on the city in 2020. With many already moving, business owners have lamented a brain drain in professions from teaching to IT. Um, apparently, bookstores are under attack in Hong Kong, if you own a bookstore and either have or have ever sold any book or newspaper that in any way has ever possibly criticized China, you could be arrested as the owner of the bookstore or employee. Even if you've worked there, you could be um, arrested by the new security law. And so bookstores are closing in uh, Hong Kong, uh, left, right, and center. Apparently, the police have called upon taxi drivers to report anyone that they suspect to be involved in violence, terrorism, or other crimes. There's a national security hotline that's known as a snitch line for tips from the public that have received, they've received hundreds of thousands of reports. So if there's someone in your family you don't like very much or someone at your office you're not too fond of, Phone the snitch line and phone them in. Uh, rat on them that they once talked about something that might have something to do with national security, and they might get arrested. And you can, you know, you can make them go to jail. How about that? How would you like to live in that little economy, that little world of terror, complete terror? Uh, Hong Kong, the Chinese have screwed it up royally. What can I say? Yeah, not not good. Several independent bookstores, um, uh, to uh, known to support freedom and ex of expression, have said their businesses have been targeted by frequent government checks on anything from land regulations to whether their business license was clearly displayed. Uh, they're looking for any reason to get them. Um, 
Yes. Uh, fun stuff. Yikes. The arts community is terrified. The drama awards and uh, and uh, theaters, uh, they're people putting on plays, <laughs> they're shutting down. Uh, yes, not good. Even priests um, are having a tough time answering the question if a parishioner goes to a church and has a private discussion with a pastor and uh, mentions that they're having issues, um, must the pastor now go to the police and report the parishioner to the police? The police are saying only if the, if the pastor knows of security law violations, which covers everything. Uh, so um, don't even go to church, folks. Uh, yeah, talk about fun. Yikes. Uh, what can I say? Uh, thank you all. Um, could I ask about SoFi Volume? Kaiser Kaiser Trip wants to know. Uh, the candles are red for selling, green for buying. I assume we can tell who's holding or how the day traders are affecting the volume. I'm interested in the institutional investors buying and that some cannot buy since it's not a member of the S&P. Um, well, yeah, I mean, until the company trades at over $10 a share, in some cases, some funds, funds can't buy it. It has to trade over ten dollars for like a year without a single day under ten. Um, has to make at least four quarters of money or more consistently. Has to be a member of the S P five hundred. There are all kinds of rules for all kinds of different institutions, of which there are hundreds of thousands around the world. Hundreds of thousands around the world. Um, there are fifteen institutions. So, SoFi and 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 other companies uh, sometimes qualify for investing for some firms and sometimes don't. It's the way it is. Um, this, of course, means if you're a retail investor, you have no restrictions. You can buy whatever you want, when you want, at whatever price you want. And so, if you're picking up SoFi at seven forty-five a share, and an institution is buying stock from you at twenty-seven forty-five a share, do you care? Do you really care? Uh, thank you very much. I saw a lot of pictures of Winnie the Pooh when I was in Hong Kong. I wonder why. What headline is this, Uncle Bruce? Uh, what headlines? Oh, if you go to Wall Street Journal, you'll find uh, a story about about Hong Kong in there. Uh, yeah, not not good. Um, hmm. Yikes! Uh, yeah, don't go to Hong Kong, kids. I I I uh, I've always wanted to go to Hong Kong. I I had always wanted to go to Hong Kong. For a uh, for a visit, a trip, uh, several, uh, but uh, not now. <laughs> no, thank you. I don't think that would be such a good idea, especially with a YouTube channel. And I say what I think. <laughs> not a good idea to go to Hong Kong now. I don't think, or China for that matter. Yeah. Yikes. What can I say, everybody? What can I say? It is it is what it is. Um, wow. Anyway, there you go. Welcome to the party, all. I'm glad you're here. There's a, a headline here that just came across Wall Street Journal. Elizabeth Warren urges the SEC to investigate Tesla over board independence. The senator raised concerns about conflicts of interest and board disclosure. Uh, senator Warren renewed calls to the SEC to investigate whether Tesla ran afoul of regulations governing board independence at public companies. Um, Warren, in a letter sent this week, also expressed concern about potential conflicts of interest between Tesla and the private companies Elon Musk runs, including X. She asked the agency to examine whether Carmaker's board had been upfront with investors about any associated risks. New evidence has emerged in recent months that deepen my concerns that Tesla's board lacks independence from Mr. Musk, who uses his control over the board for his personal benefits rather than the best interest of Tesla's shareholders, wrote Warren, a Democrat from Massachusetts. She's raised similar concerns in the letter to the SEC last summer. In her latest correspondence, she cited a Wall Street Journal investigation documenting the close personal and financial ties between Musk, who is Tesla's chief executive, and several board members, including some uh, who are designated as independent. Tesla has paid its directors mostly in stock options, and many of those currently serving on the company's eight-person board have received equity worth hundreds of millions of dollars, the journal reported in February. Several current and former Tesla board members have additionally invested millions of dollars in Musk's companies. 
The journal also reported that several, some current and former Tesla directors have consumed drugs with Mr. Musk. An SEC spokesman said the agency's chair, Gary Gensler, would respond to members of Congress directly and that the SEC doesn't comment on the existence or non-existence of a possible investigation. Tesla and Musk didn't respond to requests for a comment. I wonder why they wouldn't respond for a request to a comment. Why wouldn't they respond? I mean, what the hell are you hiding? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, very interesting. Thank you all for being here. Um, isn't it fun out there? Just amazing. Mm. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Looking at other headlines. Anything else to uh, wonder about? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, all kinds of fun out there. Um, mm, 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 mm. China central bank hints at more monetary easing. That's uh, coming out. Um, not surprising. Their economy is in a complete mess. You know, it used to be interesting when we uh, talked about the China economy about a year ago, two years ago. There were little signs, little little cracks. Uh, I remember Beach Boy and I would have spirited discussions about real estate issues in China and how bondholders, international bondholders, were suing to get um, to get the interest payments and how China was delinquent on, on bond payments. Um, then we've heard about more issues about the Chinese economy and then we heard about the young um, um, the under 30 year olds in china can't get a job right now uh, the unemployment rate is rumored to be 40 percent but the government stopped issuing reports they just just won't release them anymore <laughs> yeah, with china we don't have any bad news we don't have any bad news well what about the young with unemployment oh we don't report that oh well how are they doing we don't have any bad news we, if you can point to government reports that show bad news, we'll comment on it. Well, where's the youth unemployment report? We don't do that. Uh, oh, I see. Um, Beachwood, yeah, I'd like to report the homeless guy teaching how to write options, getting out of debt. What is this? And working from home and no lamp. I'd like to report him. Always wanted to be a lion tamer. Uh, Karen, Karen, I went to Hong Kong 25 years ago. It was wonderful then. Dude, I'd say as a tourist, you don't really experience any of the oppression. At least that was my experience. The citizens, on the other hand, can you imagine being a citizen of Hong Kong? Apparently, um, Hong Kongers are terrified of being called out by angry neighbors who don't like the sound of your stereo. Uh, they're worried about uh, uh, Hong Kongers who think you are talking about democracy when you shouldn't. And they'll, they, they call the tip line, the snitch line report you it's as bad now in hong kong as it was for decades in east germany because in east germany up until 1989 when the wall came down before that from the second world war forward when the wall went up and all that one in seven east germans were employed by or were snitching to the stasi the secret police and the largest government agency the East German government had was the secret police. That was the number one employer of East Germans in East Germany, the secret police. And so no East German was safe whatsoever. From childhood on, any comment you made as a seven, eight, nine-year-old could come back to haunt you or haunt your parents your grandparents and all your other relatives because if you as a nine-year-old were spouting off about how great England is or how great the Beatles are or whatever in public and someone heard it and snitched on your nine-year-old child you now had visitations from certain government people regarding the welfare of your child uh, maybe your child would be better off in social services because it's clearly evident that in your house your child is not being looked after properly and maybe you're not a fit parent anymore and maybe you belong in an insane asylum for treatment while we look after your child for the next 10 years and uh, we'll take it from there uh, it was horrifying horrifying 
That was East Germany, let alone China. Oh, my God, what's happening in China? People disappear in China. They just vanish. Have you seen Charlie lately? When's the last time you saw him? Two weeks ago? Has anyone been to his house lately? There's nobody there. Whoa, what? Where did Charlie go? Yikes. Um, anyway, there you go. Um, dude, we had some family traveling with us in journalism, and they were worried that something would happen. We were all left alone. Lots of security checks, though. Touch grass. You must be talking about Georgia, the state. Beach Boy, Uncle Bruce, didn't your parents have to leave East Germany? No. No, no, my parents did not. Thank God for that. No, my parents were not uh, were not involved in anything East German. I knew uh, my parents knew people. Yes, they knew of people, and my my family, extended family, some were in East Germany after the war. Um, some were told by the relatives in the West, "Get out while you can." In nineteen like fifty. Come on over here to the West German side. Get out of the East German side. And they would say, we've been on this farm for 30 years. We have a farm. We can't leave the building behind. We can't. Our lives are here. And, uh, by 1960, the wall went up, and now you were going to stay where you are staying, and you are never leaving. And uh, the farm became part of the state. <laughs> you lost your farm anyway. And now you were an employee of the state. You weren't a farm owner. You were an employee of the state, and uh, yes, things changed. Um, but what can I say? Lorraine, uh, Karim, that, that's when Hong Kong was under British rule. I was a banker at HSBC at an earlier age, and uh, those are the good old days. Uh, yes, I've always wanted to uh, see Hong Kong, but never did get the chance. And uh, now I am not going near that place. Uh, no thank you. No thank you uh, very much at all. What can I say? Welcome all to the party, kids. Uh, nice to have you with us. Uh, hope you're having an okay day today. I hope you don't mind uh, how the markets are treating you. I hope the markets are treating you all right. Uh, you deserve to get the best of the best. Thank you for these uh, thumbs ups today. And uh, thank you for joining this channel as members and uh, following here. Those of you who are upgrading your membership to Gold Bagel level, thank you. And congratulations to you. Um, 249 thumbs ups now. Thank you very very much uh we're coming up to the two hour window for our show uh 322 of you are here 249 thumbs ups are on the board we thank you for that if you can find uh, the thumbs up button and nail it please nail that for us that would be great thank you all uh yes unfortunately things have changed dramatically in china and elsewhere and uh uh, the world rankings for happiness um if you ask under 30 year olds in China, how they like living in China as under 30 year olds, you're not in the near top, uh, you're not in the top half of the world rankings, uh, you're in the bottom half of the world rankings. rankings. Um, uh, but apparently, out of Hong Kong, a lot of Chinese nationals have gotten out uh, because they know that as these new laws get passed, their past is now being questioned. How loyal were you to our country when you were 25 years old? That can put you in jail as a 50-year-old now. Of what you thought, said, did, expressed back then. Um, how would you like to live in a country like that? Uh, wow. Uh, I don't. I don't think so. I, I don't think. Uh, no, I don't think so. because Hong Kong was always an independent territory, and it was part of the UK prior to the uh, to the 90s. Um, obviously, anyone living in Hong Kong in the 1980s would have behaved completely different than how they behave now. I mean, come on. Um, but with the, the Chinese secret police now running everything in Hong Kong, um, cameras everywhere, police officers with cameras. Uh, I was reading a story the other day about a U.S. businessman who uh, was working for a, a tech company uh, based in Hong Kong or, or Shanghai, maybe. And uh, living in a very nice neighborhood, uh, had been for years working for the company, uh, got a knock on the door one evening on a weeknight, opened the door. Nine police officers were on the front door, uh, one with camera, with a cam running, running camera, being asked to provide a passport to the lead officer. They were checking the individual's immigration status on a Wednesday night um at his house 
the paddy wagon was right over there in case you didn't happen to have your passport with you. Um, he provided his passport. He had to prove to them that he really was employed by his employer um, under national security laws that had just been passed. They were making sure that he was not a spy, that he was truly an employee of a company. And there were nine officers probably there to take a look through the rest of the house once they took him away, if they took him away, to ensure that there was nothing uh, illegal in the house against government uh, policies and what have you, to again stack the charges on top of the charges on top of the charge. This guy was never getting out of jail if he was going to jail. Thankfully, uh, he was fine, but I would think if I were that individual, um, once the police left the property, I would have gone to my uh, closet, grabbed my suitcase, packed up some clothing and my personal effects, and left everything else behind and took a cab to the airport and got out. Uh, I would think that would be my next move. Uh, get the hell out of there. Um, make a few phone calls once you're out uh, to uh, secure the house and have stuff shipped to you, but uh, get out. Um, man, oh man, how would you like to have something like that happen to your house? Uh, you know, 10 at night, you know, hello? We're just here to check your immigration status. Oh, really? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. Mm. Ed, uh, what's your play for the dip in Spire? What do you think? Well, if it got low enough, um, then it might be worthy of a, of a cash secured put, perhaps. Uh, 1351 is where it's at, but I don't know if there's a cash secured put you can play on Spire. I really don't know. Uh, the low today, 1305, 1.4 million traded. There's obviously a huge redistribution of shares going on. A good thing, uh, but it could take a day or two to fully be completed. So I fold my arms right now and just watch and see. I, I don't know. I mean, this was a buy at 650 a month and a half ago, but you know, when stocks are at their all time lows, people don't like buying. They feel it'll go lower. Psychology overpowers common sense. What can you do? And of course, uh, the eight second attention span world in which we live, uh, hey, I'll buy it at the all time low, Bruce. Just tell me the minute it's going to go up and then I'll buy just before that moment. I'm, I'm loyal. I'm a loyal investor. Just tell me when to buy it. There you go. Don't know what else to say about Spire. 752 on SoFi. Um, the high of the day was uh, 755 today. Uh, we were at 765, 766 on the pre-market. Uh, I think we're going to go higher than that today. Um, and maybe now we're going to get a run through that level. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, we're 752, 753 right at the moment on SoFi with a high of 755 on the market. Okay. 304 point gain on the Dow. I think that's near the high of the day. <coughs> Looking good. <coughs> 31 point gain on S&P and 120 point gain on NASDAQ. It's not the high of the day for NASDAQ, but it's near the high of the day for S&P. But I think the Dow at 305 is the high of the day. 753 on, on so far. 1361 up 13 cents on GameStop. Rocket Lab 413 right now up a dime. Uh, NVIDIA is up nine bucks again to 912, 913. Adobe down eight dollars at 511. Uh, put credit spreads on Adobe would be a good move. Uh, 440, 460, easy, easy money there. Go out to April, May, try and get a credit there on 10, 20 dollar spread. I think you'll do just fine. Okay. Uh, thank you all. Uh, 756 on SoFi. High of the day right now. There you go. Uh, didn't take anything to have SoFi break the high of the day. 16 million, 16.3 million traded at uh, 756 now. Uh, this is the session's high uh, already. Um, 757, we just hit another high on your SoFi shares. There you go. Um, we were, as I said, in the pre-market, 765, something like that for a bit. Uh, we're at 755.57 right now on SoFi, the high of the day right now. Good stuff. I like it. Welcome, everybody, to the show. Nice to have you here. Hope you're doing okay. Hope you don't mind these uh, markets. Uh, they fluctuate. They flex. They go up. They come down a bit. They go up again. 
giddy up everybody to uh, to the <coughs> program. Um, hope you don't mind the way it's going. I think some of you are getting richer today. I get the impression that some of you are definitely getting richer today. Um, Apple down 340. Uh, opportunity knocks. Apple, if it goes down to 7, 170, 160, then those 130, 140, 150 uh, credit, put credit spreads are your ticket. Uh, right now, Apple call spreads are also a good idea. Uh, 190 to 210, anywhere in there might be an okay trade. Maybe 2 to 210, 220, very good trade. The high of the year, 199.62, so, you know, 200 to 220 would be a safe place to write call on a credit spread. Goldman Sachs, look at this, up 11.33. Uh, the high of the uh, 52 weeks, 409.90, I think we've done that today. Not bad. Uh, we're up 40 on Cisco. Um, Tesla is down just 55 cents today. Uh, Microsoft up 349. The all-time high, $430. We're at 428.75. Uh, that means put credit spreads are the way to go on so on Microsoft. Maybe 360, 380, 370, uh, something like that. Pfizer at 27.90, up 20 cents. HBQ at 30 bucks a share. Up 35 cents. Uh, Google 150.25, the high of the, the year 155. Uh, Amazon 180 right now, high of the year 181. That's a put credit spread to candidate right there. Nvidia 914 up 1080. Here we go. Unity up 115. AI up 60 cents. Um, Adobe down 697. That's coming back now. <clears throat> Netflix. Up a dollar. IBM only down a buck sixty. Just added two dollars to that stock price. Meta up five thirty. Vanic up seven twenty. Home Depot up eleven fifty. Enphase up three thirty. Palantir up fifty cents. Uh, Uber up one thirty. And uh, Coinbase up sixteen dollars. Near its all time high two seventy four eighty two at two seventy three twenty seven. But I'm afraid of touching that stock. Uh, too volatile uh, for moi. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Many other candidates can be played with instead. Thank you all for joining us this morning from around the world. You guys are awesome. It's great to have you here. We're at 756 on your SoFi right now. Uh, very interesting uh, day here. Uh, 249 plus thumbs ups. Thank you for that. We're pushing 300 thumbs up soon. At this pace, yep, 260. We only need 40 more to get the 300 thumbs up. So you guys are incredible. Thank you very, very much. Um, there you go. Um, yeah, giddy up, everybody. Welcome to the party here. Nice to see you around. NVIDIA up 11 month now. Uh, 915 on NVIDIA coming on again. Here we go. 756 on SoFi. The volume now on SoFi, 17.3 million. Yeah, we're, we're coming in some volume now. That's great. Uh, we're going higher, 756. There's nothing to stop the stock. Not even 20 million moved it uh, to this level. We were at $6.87 yesterday. Um, 20, 30 cents more. We got a $1 gain since yesterday afternoon. Hello. Uh, there's awareness here. SoFi awareness is coming in. Uh, that's my opinion on this. GameStop now, 1364 up 16. Rocket Lab, 414 up 10 cents. AI up 57. The Spiders are up 335. The Qs are up 487. Uh, Uber up 127 to 79.91. We're going to 80 bucks on Uber. Nice and interesting and fascinating and uh, unique activity here. Uh, another day in paradise. Thank you all for joining me from wherever you are. Send me an email if you're going to come out to the meet and greet. April the 13th at the Outback Steakhouse in Ontario, California, right by the Ontario Mills Mall, the intersection of Highway 10, which goes from Santa Monica to Jacksonville, Florida, and Highway 15 that goes from San Jose all the way up to Montana, the Canadian border. The 10 and the 15, uh, join us at that intersection. We're on the northwest corner of that intersection. <laughs> uh, 
easy to get to those two locations that location uh peace at gato come on out see us on april 13th saturday at noon april 13th uh, three weeks from now and uh, lunch is on jen and i if you want to come out have a have a bite to eat at outback well we're paying come on out uh love to see you thank you all very much all right that's the story uh i'm sticking to that what can i say uh, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, the Swiss National Bank ro- ro- lowered their interest rates by a quarter of a point to one and a half percent. That in itself is incredibly interesting that the rate is only one and a half percent as it is. In the U.S., it's five percent. The Swiss rate is now one and a half percent. The Swiss government is trying to get business going in Switzerland. They want to get Swiss businesses doing something. They want Swiss nationals to buy homes, refinance homes, expand and renovate. They want car sales. They want, you know, they want economic activity. Um, Switzerland, a leading industrial country of the world, uh, always one of the top 10 most uh, favorite places for people to live, travel to. Um, Yeah, one and a half percent interest rate. Is the rate over there quite amazing? Yeah, Dean is saying, you know, you used to mention Micron more. I'm you. Uh, do you think its earnings boost is worthy of some cash secured puts? I, I don't know. I, I don't follow MU very closely, as you can tell. Uh, it's all about Micron and, uh, you know, the other magnificent seven. So I, I don't have an opinion for you. Um, I would say, though, that a safe way to make money. Using less money would be to do uh, credit spreads. Uh, Micron credit spreads might be the better way to do this rather than risk the uh, the cash component on a an MU trade. It's a hundred ten dollar stock. I mean, you want to write a cash secured put on MU a one hundred dollar put. You got to come up with ten G's to write one put with ten thousand dollars. You could probably do ten. Um, uh, put credits, uh, put uh, credit spreads, uh, $10 differential, probably go um, 70, 80, 65, 75, 75, 85, 70, 80. Um, you could probably do 10 of those. And um, my hunch here is uh, whatever you can get for a $100 cash secured put, um, you're probably going to make more than that with the amount of money you need to do that trade. On one contract, you can probably do 10 spreads and make more money net to you even if you got half the spread so maybe look into that you can always look into the 15 and 20 dollars spreads of course uh, 80s for the high 60 for the low take a bigger credit spread in capital and when you get half of it take your exit and say thank you very much um, you got 20 grand lying around you can do 10 of them um, that would be a nice little trade on MU just my thought, Dean. Uh, I, I'm thinking credit spreads might be a lot cheaper to uh, to play with. Um, for MU, if you feel that there's real upside in the stock over time, then look for a 2026 expiry deep in the money calls. But something tells me you might have to buy 50s, 40s, 60s, and then it could cost you four, five, six grand each or more. That's still expensive to do, you know, a number of rights. And so spreads, uh, call spreads, Put spreads way behind or way ahead of the stock. Investigate your options chain and see if there's something there for you. It might be worth your while. You've taken the classes. You know what to do. If you haven't taken the classes out there, people, follow others like Dean and others. Take the classes, study your option chains, and pick your targets. And maybe maybe Micron is one of them. Maybe it is. Uh, There you go. Okay, all right, 1312 on Spire, down 435. The volume now, 1.55 million on Spire. We got SoFi at 748, up 11 cents. Uh, The high of the session now on Spire is 557. The volume, 18.5 million shares. So we've had some, you know, Movement there um, might go higher yet. GameStop thirteen seventy two up twenty four cents. Rocket Lab four eleven up eight. 
podcast. And there you go. Uh, you know, uh, Dean is saying makes sense, Bruce. Thanks. That's what I've been doing with coin and NVIDIA spreads. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I love cash secured puts on cheap stock. If you believe in Rocket Lab for the next two years, you believe in Matterport, you believe in, in Smart Rent, you like uh, SoFi, you like, you know, Rocket, like uh, whatever I've said here, whatever I've been, I'm repeating myself, I apologize. But these stocks are $2 to $8 each. These are all candidates for cash secured put writing. 2025, 2026, get out there. Take these huge, huge cash premiums and absolutely write some of these. They're cheap to write. You need $700 on a SoFi $7 cash secured put. Seven grand, you can write 10 of them for crying out loud. That's nothing money in this business of ours. Uh, Rocket Lab, you can do a, a $4 stock, you know. There you go. Uh, it's official. The, the Department of Justice has charged Apple with a crime. Well, no kidding. Uh, how many are they handling in their legal department all the time? Just add it to the list. Um, Department of Justice, this story will fade away in a couple of days, and it'll go deep background. <clears throat> it'll take years to resurface. It will not make a difference to the company's bottom line. I don't think so. What can I say? Uh, Splair, I'm wishing all of you a relaxed day. Thank you very much, Splair. Thank you. We just hit the two-hour mark of our show today. So we're technically at the end of the show. Uh, but thank you all for uh, for being here. Uh, looks like uh, Linda is coming. Uh, looks like JR is coming. Um, looks like uh, uh, D DH is coming. Damien uh, is coming to the meet and greet. People are coming to the meet and greet. Uh, thank you for letting me know. I uh, appreciate all of you uh, putting out the word here, um, telling us that you're coming out to see us in person uh, for an official meet and greet here in Ontario, California. I, I very much am looking forward to it. Uh, Jen, I know, is very much looking forward to it because she uh, would not be meeting you in person if she couldn't walk. <laughs> If her hip operation hadn't worked out as well as, as, as it's working out, she wouldn't be at the meet and greet, but she's going to be there. Uh, we worked out the date between us here, and we're looking forward to catch you guys. Um, won't this be great? Susan Shops says, uh, Bruce, uh, when is the best time to write these cash secured puts and these put spreads um, uh, after the stock has dropped from a run? Or does it matter? It's just when I write as the stock is rising and then it drops, I'm waiting forever. <laughs> you know, sometimes you want to do this when there's nothing going on. Sometimes the stock is just sitting there. It's a perfect time to do a credit spread. Um, you know, if you're an optimist, a stock is at its lower end of a range, you write the put spreads. If you're a pessimist, the stock's had a good run lately and, you know, maybe it's topped out a little bit. You write a call spread, but way out. Like I'm talking 10, 15% out of the stock's range, either 15% higher or lower. And do the credit spreads out there. Go further out in time with the knowledge that, yeah, I know I'm writing a two-month spread, but I'm not going to be in this position for two months. I'm in this position for less than half of this. Because if I can bring in a spread of $4 or $3, and I can scoop half of that as a profit, I'll close the position then. And I'll write another one two months out looking for half again. That is the normal you may want to play with. So scour the market, scour your trades, scour your stocks. But I would do the credit spreads on these you know, higher cap stocks, even on the markets, Qs and, and uh, SPYs. Um, spiders and cues. You might want to do a, a put credit spread, <clears throat> 10, 12% behind the market or ahead of the market <clears throat> a month or two out. <clears throat> Just be, uh, be patient, be diligent, make sure you do the stink bids and stink asks to get the maximum spread and go from there. The big E has given up a bunch of knee emojis with a zip at the end. That's important. Linda B, so happy to attend the meet and greet. I'm looking forward to it. BW, um, cash secured puts are good, 
but your money could be tied up for a year plus, not necessarily, but have to be ready for that credit spreads are much shorter term. You don't need as much cash and they're not locked up. Well, again, it all depends on which stock you're talking about and what the spread, uh, what the what price of the put is versus the stock price. It's a lot to uh, think about here. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities here to make money. For some of you, you love put credit spreads. You just you just love them. That's the way to go. For others of you, you hate them. It's okay. It's uh, quite all right. Um, that's why there's so many ways to play the options market. But be a writer. Be a writer and uh, dare the market uh, to mess with you. I think you'll be fine. Uh, we're up 338 on the Dow now. Uh, we're at 912 on Adobe. Uh, sorry, we're 510 on Adobe, 912 on NVIDIA. So NVIDIA's up 8, Adobe's down 8. Spire, 1259, down 488 right now. I wouldn't have bought it at 19 yesterday, that's for sure. Um, 1.7 million volume. This will take a day or two to go through. This entire 4.3 million share redistribution is going to take a little time to get done. But at the end of the day, the stock is better off for it, especially the liquidity factor. This is going to be good. This will be good. SoFi, 744, up 8. GameStop, 1382, up 35 cents. Rocket Lab, 412, up 9. AI, 2909, up 44. Uber's up 141 to $80.05 a share on Uber. How about that? Um, Apple down 462 at 174.12. End phase 117.22. By the way, speaking of a dip, maybe Apple will dip to 170 today. Maybe. And maybe next week it'll be back to 172, 174. Well, maybe a 140, 160 put credit spread is a good idea today on Apple. Because if the shares are going to bump up five bucks, go down to 170, go to 175, hey, maybe doing that put spread at the low is a good idea. Check out the market, check out your spreads, check out your contracts. Um, end phase up 361, AMD down 90, Netflix up 82, Tesla down 112, um, Unity up 97, Google down a quarter. Moderna up 174, Cisco up 43, Pfizer up 17, IBM down 122. It was down three something today. Now down 122. HBQ up 57 cents, Microsoft up 268, Amazon up 190, Home Depot up 1189, Avanic up 646, Goldman Sachs up 1462, hitting all time highs or highs of the year anyway, $411. Market cap, $133 billion for Goldman Sachs. Boeing is up 2 bucks. Meta up 3 73 to 509 Target down 61 JP Morgan up 196 at 198 Costco up 570 to 746 a share. Walmart up 21 cents. Disney up 32 American Airlines up 15 AMC up 1.9 DraftKings up 42 Royal Caribbean up 88 cents at 136.41. There you go. There it is. There's the story. I'm sticking to it. Thank you all for joining us today. Jen and I much appreciate, very much appreciate you. We look forward to seeing you April 13, noon, Outback, Ontario, California. Be there, be square. Send me an email. Tell me you're coming. We're going to write a list. The first that tell me they're coming, you're in. If you are late in telling me, you might or might not be in. Depends on what the numbers are. But thank you all. We can handle about 35 of you. Love to see you. Love to have you come and join us. Thank you all very, very much. Uh, I'll be watching. Uh, you never know if I make a video later today. You never know. Keep your eyes open. Make sure to become a member of this channel. Make sure your alerts are on. Please subscribe. Have a great rest of your session today. Get rich out there, kids. Get richer. Thank you all for helping out. We'll see you later on either today or tomorrow, first thing in the morning. Don't forget, tomorrow's Friday, option expiry day tomorrow. Oh, boy, here we go again. Okay, guys, all the best to you. We'll see you later. Bye for now.